The Purchase is Linda Spaulding's fourth novel. She's also the author of two books of non-fiction. Born in Kansas, she came to Canada in 1982 and now lives in Toronto where she edits Brick magazine. Linda has received the Harbourfront Festival Prize for her contributions to the Canadian literary community. The Purchase follows the story of Daniel Dickinson, a Pennsylvanian Quaker who, with five children and an unloved and very young new wife, is forced to leave his community. They settle on the edge of the Virginia frontier in the early 1800s. Daniel never abandons his Quaker principles, although they're increasingly compromised, and the rigidity of his belief and his character make life difficult for everybody around him. The moral complexity of his position is underlined when, almost by accident, he acquires a slave. And in this extraordinarily subtle and really um, moving book, the consequences of this acquisition shape his family's future. The auctioneer wore a black hat and a jacket so shiny it might have been greased. His boots were oiled and the gloves he would wave during his display of wares were a bright shade of yellow. Gentlemen of Virginia, he intoned in a voice that commanded all friendly and curious chatter to stop. We are right close to our border here at the finest farm I've had the fortune put up on offer. We are right here next to Tennessee where ch chattel carries scars and bitterness such that it ruins them for work among honest men. But here in Virginia, he went on without drawing a breath. We sell only well-tended, healthy, Virginia-born flesh. <coughs> Daniel remembered the song Old Levine used to sing. There's a better world coming. Will you go along with me? Oh, go along with me. Once he thought of it, he found he could not banish the tune from his mind, even as six faces peered out from the pen where they had been placed along several cows and four sheep. He understood in that instant why Levine had refused to come to Virginia, although she had been with his children since they were born and with his wife from her birth to her death. Levine had been a servant, decently paid and entirely free. This was something very different, something he had not quite imagined even when he listened to the exhortation of Quaker abolitionists, his mouth felt dry. He retreated to his wagon and stood by it, dismayed. Will you go along with me? Still watching, in spite of himself, he saw a woman pulled up onto the stage. He saw the auctioneer open her dress where there was an infant lashed to her breast. Daniel was not a man who had looked on bare arms or shoulders. He had never seen his own dear Rebecca's entire self. But the dress opened like a wound, and he stared now at a woman's flesh. The auctioneer declared, declared that the girl was full of good seed and rich milk. You just look here at this baby, fat and male, and worth an extra $50. I'm going to start at the bid and hire for this reader. The crowd was eager. They did not want to tarry or amuse themselves. Someone bid, and then someone else, and the girl was put, pulled off the stage, while a man held her arm in his bunched up fist. Daniel watched a young man of 16 or 17 years old get sold to the slave trader for $220, <coughs> after he had been made to describe his talents, which, the Lord says, we must not waste, the auctioneer reminded him, shaking a plump, gloved finger. Having spoken, the young man was thereafter silent, never taking his eyes off the yellow gloves, never opening his mouth or closing his eyes for a minute. 